So if you made it through the other video, you'll recall me mentioning a few things I've left out. First, I haven't really explained this angular business in, in the argument I cos function in a lot of detail, and I ignored the possibility of starting our oscillatory motion with some initial conditions other than just starting from rest. So I thought I'd cover those here. Let's start by remembering our equation for simple harmonic motion. So that's x equals a cos omega t. And I referred to this here as, as the argument of our cos function. It's going to have to be an angle because cos takes an angle as, as its argument. I said that because our motion was just back and forth of our spring, that there's nothing physical about this angle. I'll, that's, that's still true, but there's an interesting analogy that you might find useful if you want to think about it in a different kind of way. So imagine we have a turntable such as this. So if you're familiar with rotational motion, you'll see that our ball is spinning around the center of our turntable in a, an anti-clockwise motion like this. Now there's light coming down from above which casts a shadow onto a screen. What sort of motion does this shadow undergo? Well, the distance, the horizontal distance, if we take this as being a zero angle here, our horizontal distance is just going to be the cos of whatever our angle is multiplied by the radius of our turntable. So r cos theta. If our turntable is rotating at a particular angle of velocity, omega, and it starts from an angle of zero, then the position of the shadow is going to be r cos omega t. So r is just going to, is our amplitude. This, this motion, this shadow, is exactly the same as the motion of a block that has a, the same amplitude as the rates of the turntable and the same angular frequency as the angular frequency of the turntable. So whatever angle your ball is at here is the same angle as this, this argument of our cos function. Now I keep using this word argument. A better word or a more common word to describe this is phase. So I'm going to call this, the, this whole argument here the phase of our, of our oscillatory motion. Okay. So this concept of phase will actually become a little bit more relevant in just a moment when we talk about initial conditions. So last time we had a motion that looked something like this. Forgive me, I'm not a great artist. So we started from rest here at our, at our amplitude, we drop down to negative amplitude, and then back and forth and back and forth. So our starting position is equal to our amplitude. But what if we did something like this? We start here with a here, we give it a kick away from the, the equilibrium position, just, just of interest. And we do something like this. Now you'll notice our motion is still going to be exactly the same, our acceleration, our force is the same at every point. So we end up with a very similar curve, but we start, we're starting with a velocity. Now, we can't describe that with just x equals a, a cos omega t, because it's clearly not a cos function. It's also not exactly a sine function. We need to push our function, our displacement, to the right. Well, in this particular case it's the right, but in general it could be anything, it could be the left or the right. So we have something that looks like a cos omega t. We want to add or subtract something from the argument to push our, our function to the left or the right. We need to add a constant. We're going to add a constant. We could call a constant c. We could call it whatever we like. I'm going to call it phi naught. Okay. Why phi? Phi is the Greek letter f. The word phase comes from, I don't know what the Greek word is, but presumably it starts with a phi, so it'll make sense. Naught, because when t equals zero, 
omega t is going to equal zero. So this whole our whole argument is just going to be zero. So phi naught is what we call our phase constant. It's it's what the phase is when we're at zero. It's our initial phase, and it just gets added to every other phase that we have. So I guess the question to ask here for our particular example is the phase positive or negative? Well, let's let's consider if we've pushed. Imagine we've pushed our our function to the right, our cos function to the right. You could say the left as well. It's just the same thing works out. You just have to think about it a bit differently. You have to draw draw it to the negatives. I find this a little bit easier. This where I've marked here would be where we're supposed to start, where our our phase should equal zero. So the argument of our cos function should equal zero at this point. Now we're at a positive time. I should have marked the axes. We're at a positive time. Omega is positive by definition. So if omega is positive, t is positive. Omega t plus phi equals zero. Phi in this particular case must be negative. And there's a whole lot of other ways we could we could potentially work this kind of thing out. We might know in, rather than instead of if we if we don't know how far along the axis this is, we might instead be told we give it a kick at some position and with some velocity. So we know what x is and we know what v is, but we, we don't know we don't know other factors. We could then instead use v equals negative a omega sine omega t plus phi naught. Remember, because this is a constant, it's not going to come out of our equation out when, we, when we take the derivative, of course. Uh, it's just going to stay in here every time you take the derivative. So perhaps the velocity is part of our initial conditions, and we can just set up whatever equations we need to to work out what our, uh, what our phase constant is, what our amplitude is, etc., etc. Of course, that's, that's one of the things we might not actually know uh, the amplitude at the very start because we're not starting at our, at our a. So let's just say, for instance, we're starting at a position, who knows, one meter. We start with a velocity of two meters per second. And we'll just say you know, our angular velocity. We might be told the period, t, but from that we'll just say the angular velocity is one, one radian per second. I should say rad per second. Even though radians aren't really a real unit, how can we work this out? Well, let's just say at t equals zero, one equals a cos phi naught. Uh, our other initial condition, our velocity is two equals negative a. Our angular velocity is one, so that's nothing. Sine zero because omega is zero. Phi naught. And now I can say, well, there's a few ways we go about this, but we know sine on cos is tan, so we could just divide one by the other and say, uh, divide this by this, and we get two equals, well, the a's are going to cancel, negative tan phi naught, phi naught equals inverse tan or, or perhaps arc tan of negative two. I'll just throw that into my calculator and we see that equals minus 1.1, we'll call it 1, 1, rad per second. Sorry, just rad. Okay, so there's a whole lot of kinds of problems that be thrown at you like this. You just have to think about it in terms of the, the phase constant.
Okay. And uh, I guess we get through an acceleration too, but generally the initial conditions you lie that you get enough information to work out the phase constant just from just from the position, or you'll be given perhaps an initial velocity or an amplitude or some other information. You'll be able to sort it out from there. Okay. So yeah. Next time we'll probably talk about energy or damping. Well, we've got a few other topics to cover before the end of the week. So I'll see you in the next video.